What's up, everybody? I hope you're doing good. It's a beautiful day. It's a weekend. I'm sure you relaxed. Um, thank you very much for stopping by. It's always a great pleasure to have you today and every day. Thank you. Okay, this is your first time. Please join us. Click on the button. Subscribe so we can see each other more often, right? So we can build our community. And uh, before we start, let's all do this so we can push our video further. Okay, great. So today we're talking about Gabon. I know we haven't spoken about Gabon. Yeah, Gabon is maybe one time we spoke about Gabon. A beautiful place by the coast of Africa. Lovely area to be. Um, I have not been there yet. <laughs> I should go and visit. Yeah, I'm out here telling you beautiful place. I haven't even been there. I've seen some pictures and some videos. So if you got some time, come to Gabon. Come visit Gabon, Libreville. Lovely people there. I met many of them. Uh, so Gabon's been through some turmoil or lately some difficult time because they've changed president as well uh the disposed president ali bongo had been there for a while as well as his father so his father was the president for many many years then he became president of his father i mean i don't know why these people think these countries are kingdom these are not kingdoms you 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 know that so the bongo clan or the bongo family had been in power for about 54 years yeah, does that make any sense? That's insane, isn't it? Ali Bongo was disposed a couple of weeks ago. Um, he's not president anymore. He's been replaced by his uh, guards. Yeah, his military uh, guards took over the country. They toppled him, but very likely to him, they did not hurt him. So I would just guess he probably was very kind to them, and that maybe one of the reasons why they, you know, decided not to do him any harm. And also, some people believe that the person that toppled him is a family member. Anyway, we're going to get into that. Very <laughs> so, Ali Bongo's wife, the first lady, Sylvia Bongo, has been arrested, okay? Um, accused of money laundering. The wife of the disposed president, Ali Bongo, charged with money laundering. Sylvia Bongo Odimba, wife of the disposed president, Ali Bongo, was charged in particular with money laundering and kept in house arrest. The Libreville public prosecutor announced on Friday, one month after the overthrow of her husband in the country. So, again, fellas, same thing in Africa. Same things over and over. It's always the same thing over and over. You become president, not for your people, unfortunately, but to enrich yourself. So this lady, who is um, a French citizen, born in France, very lucky, eh? <laughs> Born in France, you marry a president, a son of a president at a time. And then you become first lady in the country. It's just very, very amazing to see that. How lucky can you be? You know, you, all of a sudden, boom, you decide the president, you found love. So in the meantime, people have fired complaints in Paris. So they say Silva Bong was being kept in house arrest in an upscale neighborhood. Mm, how nice. Upscale neighborhood in Libreville. And the French lawyers have filed a complaint in Paris, denouncing an arbitrary detention, taking hostage. They say she's been taken hostage in Gabon. So this is very interesting, fellas. I mean, you've married this guy who is an African son of a president for many, many, many years. And you've been a Gabonese yourself for many, many years. You've made lots of money laundering, you know, uh, embezzlement, getting money from public funds, money from public companies. And you know how these people operate most of the time is... Once you're in that position of power, meaning you marry somebody in power, what you do is whenever somebody comes in a country with business, they go through you. Before their business is approved, you get shares in a company. Yeah, you don't buy shares. They give you shares. They say, we bring in a business in your country. Okay, our business, let's say, is worth $100 million. Okay, out of $100 million, we're going to give you 7%. Just for you to get a signature from your husband. Or an authorization that's how it works okay and she's done that for many many years as well as a family and a son as well who's a professional as well we're just going to discover right now and now that you need to be accountable now that you've been arrested for stealing money from public funds from taking money from the people of gabon now you say you're not gabonese anymore <laughs> you are french <laughs> you should be trialed in france very interesting and it looks like the people of Gabon are not looking to let her go. They are not looking to let the leash go. Um, and I think that's the right thing to do. Three weeks after the overthrow of Ali Bongo, 
Noruda Bongo, who is the son of the president, and his team members, they call themselves the young team. Oh, you see that? The young team. The son of the president. The young team of the son of the president. They were inducted as well, and seven of them, including himself, the son of the president, were incarcerated for corruption, embezzlement of public fund, money laundering, capital conspiracy, falsification of signature of the president. Falsification of signature of the president. I'm sure that boy just played it hard. Let me remind you that um, Ali Bongo was very sick lately. He had a stroke and was not very much able to do a lot of things. So I would guess most of the time in Africa, they will speak to the son or speak to your father so he can authorize such and such thing. And maybe you go to your father and say, no, I don't authorize that. And you just go, you sign. You know, you falsify your father's signature and you get your percentage. Obviously, you say, okay, I'm going to take the document to my father, but you're going to give me 15% of your business. Is that okay? Yes. You go to your father. Your father doesn't really sign. You sign in the name of your father and you bring the document. Now, just imagine you bring the document saying my father signed. Who's going to doubt it? Nobody's going to doubt it. So this boy and his young team who's been playing big <laughs> in the capital are going to go to jail for that. And I think this is very interesting to see and we need to be very honest. Unfortunately, Africans create dictators. You know, people say you find dictators in Africa. I think Africans create dictators. Some of the people actually come in power with very good mind, very good ideas. Uh, some of the presidents say they want actually to change things. I'm not saying this is the case of Ali Bongo. But mo some presidents of Africa actually want to come and change. What happens next? As soon as he becomes a president, people of his entourage, his friends, his family members, they will come and say, dude, you only have five years to make this happen. Yes, five years. Within five years, we must be set for life. You will never get this opportunity again. This is what happens. There was a president of a country, I'm not going to say the name. Yeah. He came into power and as soon as you travel, you know, you know how it works. When a president travels, there is money that's being freed from the banks of the country. So the finance of the country allocates a certain amount of money for the president to travel. Let's say the president is leaving uh, whichever African country and going to Japan. Let me just give you a simple example. You president lived from Zimbabwe going to Japan on a diplomatic trip. The Zimbabwean finance minister will allocate money. I'm just giving Zimbabwe as an example. Allocate money for the president to travel to Japan. Okay, let's say $20 million for this trip, one week trip. So they go to Japan. They do what they have to do to Japan. But they spend the money they have to spend in Japan. Whichever money that remains, they will bring it back to the finance minister of Zimbabwe. Let's say they spend $5 million and they allocated $20 million. $15 million remaining need to be paid back into the, the bank of Zimbabwe. That's how it works. Now, there is a president who used to do that. He will travel. When he comes back, whichever money that was left, he's going to give it back to the country. You know, like, okay, we spent out of $30 million, we only spent $10 million. Here's your $20 million. He did that the first time. And only one time, the second time he traveled, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't pay the money back anymore. So, whichever money is spent, whether it's 10% of the money allocated, the rest is gone. They're going to use it. They're going to splash it. They're going to do things with it. They're going to buy villas with it. And that's what it is. And I'll tell you what. This is why I say Africans create presidents. You come and talk in their ears. You tell them how great they are. You make them believe they will never die. They are stronger than everybody. Nobody has to open their mouth against them. And that's how they create and that's how they create dictators. And because most of these countries don't have strong constitutions where they can get a president accountable for his deed, people become dictator. I personally think these people should be uh, in prison, if not uh, terminated. Yeah, I know it sounds very hard. I think it should be terminated. I think one of the main ways of getting Africans to stop stealing because we steal is to do this or get them in jail. People only react to serious reactions. Criminals only fear serious crime. Violent people only fear violence. When you say to somebody, if you steal, you're going to die. They're not going to steal. Okay? And especially you make sure you show an example. 
If you steal things that are crucial to the country, yes, I know this is a very harsh word. If you steal money that's supposed to be building an hospital for children in a destitute area of the country, you're going to be taken out. If you take things that are supposed to help older people who cannot work for themselves, orphans, um, uh, re retirees, you're going to be taken out. I'm telling you, this corruption, embezzlement, and all type of stuff going to stop. Unfortunately, they don't do that. Why they don't do that? They don't get people accountable because the people in power don't get other people accountable because they also want to steal. It's very difficult for them. Let's say uh, there's a government that's running a country right now, an African country. Those people in that government will not hold the previous people accountable to the things they did. You know why? Because they're scared. By the time they're going to leave the government, they're going to be held accountable for stealing. So what do they do? They will let the older people steal and go with it so they can also steal and go with it. But one of the best ways to stop that in Africa is to get people accountable in the most brutal way. That's our support. It's very sad. This is not the first time. I'm sure you heard of Isabel Dos Santos of Angola, the daughter of Eduardo Dos Santos, who had been president for many, many years. She became Africa's richest woman within a couple of years. Okay, Forbes magazine said she had $3 billion. A very young woman, $3 billion. Richest woman in Africa. Praised by all people all the world, you know, because you love money. You praised her so much. Just to find out later on that it's because she got commissions and parts and shares in big companies, telecommunication, cement, uh, you know, many mines and many other things. Not because she invested in those companies but because she gave a signature as the daughter of the president. And as a daughter of the president, you have very strong influence in people deciding people of a country. So if a company comes into the country, let's say a telecom company comes into the country to start, you say to them before you open your company, I want 10% shares in your company. Okay, we're going to give you 10%. Then she gets the document signed and you can start operating with no issue, no difficulties. Another company comes, a mining company, you say, okay, I want 15% of your company. Then she, she signs and you get working and she makes money. That's how she became multi-billionaire. She was held into accountable. Uh, a brand new president came into power and her money was frozen. She went from $3 billion rich to nothing. And again, this is a message to everybody. Nothing lasts forever. Whether you're the son of the president, you family member of a president, of a yeah, dictatorship and all that stuff, nothing lasts forever. Trust me, your time will come. A time will come where you're going to be accountable. Whether you like it or not, it's going to come. Just look into history. Where's Mobutu of Zaire? One of the most powerful people in the world. He was one of the richest presidents. Where is he now? He's buried somewhere in Morocco. Very away from his country. His family don't have nothing today. Where are all these presidents? The one in Central Africa. Bukasa. The em Emperor Bukasa. Nobody can overtake time. Nobody can beat time. Nobody beats time. I believe, once more, people in government should be held accountable in the hardest way possible so that they can do what they're supposed to do. You cannot be begging a government to do their jobs. No, it shouldn't be that way. They should be begging the population to vote them, to allow them to be again. But it feels like in many countries, including Nigeria, people are suffering because of embezzlement, because of stealing, money laundering, because of these people are in power. They seem to be controlling millions of people. It should be that way. And that's simply because there's no accountability. There's in this country named Congo, uh, Democratic Rep Republic of Congo that used to be named Zaire. In that country, when you become a member of a government, people applaud you. Okay, they, 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 they're going to have a party. Why do you have a party for somebody being elected into government? Why do you have a party? What's the party for? The party is just to say, okay, now we're going to be rich. Yes. And people become rich in 24 hours in the Congo. While millions of people are suffering, the country is completely destroyed. Millions of people are suffering while a very small, restrained group of people are getting richer and richer and richer. Now, the problem is what? The problem is that the Congolese people themselves applaud them. Once you become elected in government, people start praising you. People get elected in government. Two weeks later, they 
buy big buildings, they buy big villas, and there's nobody to hold them accountable. Nobody to say, how come you've just been elected now and now you've got three, five, seven houses? Nobody to have the courage to do that. Instead of having the courage to hold them accountable, they actually praise them. Congratulations, you're doing great. But in the meantime, there are no hospitals, no decent school, no public services, nothing. But you're applauding those people from being elected in government and stealing from you. That's why I say Africans create dictators. You choose your own oppressors. And that is very sad. Great again, I think, uh, this lady, Sylvia Bongo Odimba, who says, she now says she's French, she's not Gabonese. She should not be child in Gabon uh, after so many years of profiting from Gabon. Now she's going to be facing the music as well as her son and her team. The son's team is called the Young Team. Young Money, Young Team. Yeah, the country doesn't belong to you. country belongs to the people. Thank you very much for being here. Fellas, I appreciate you. Drop your comments. Speak to you soon. God bless.